Um, good morning, Laura. Hi. How are you? I'm good. You're not the only beautiful woman in town today. Oh, who else is here? My bae, Dej Love. Hey, Dej Love is here. How are you? Thanks for having me. I call her Beige Loaf. You know what I'm saying? Beige Loaf. B-A-E. That's pretty good. Yeah, I heard that before. Like, oh. Well, that's how your game gets shut down early. <laughs> I was, we were just talking to Deja off the air, and I was saying that I decided recently that because it's in, like, it's like fashionable to wear sweatpants now. Like, I'm gonna run with this till the wheels fall off because the fifth grade me would have been really excited about this. Because right. I've been waiting 20 years for sweatpants to be back, um, and I'm just gonna hold this down. Are you subscribing to this sweatpants notion? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much a chill person. I love sweatpants. Sweatwear. Sweatwear, sweatwear. in general? Sweatwear. Yeah. So even before this was in, you were still rocking sweatpants? Definitely. I but, was. But like, before She's they... always had a comfortable style, though. I like her style. Yeah, me too. I mean, sometimes it's comfortable. Sometimes it's well put together. Like, it's a little... Like, I mean, that hat. That's There's the effort there. You know, it's, a little it's, something, something. Your peripheral is, is, is kind of covered, you know, in some ways. Or was it like, I don't feel like wearing my hair? You said what? I don't feel like doing my hair today. Yeah, kind of like yeah, <laughs> running late. Let's just throw on a hat. How annoying is the um, when you start blowing up mm-hmm. and you're a female artist? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not using the word female anymore. That word's out, Laura Styles. What do you, why? People don't like female anymore. I don't care. Okay, well, I'm just telling you, my I'm not going to go down like that. All right. All right. Fine. When you're a woman and mm-hmm. you're an artist, mm-hmm. there's a there's a lot of work that goes into it that a lot of people don't understand if they're not in the industry in terms of um, like when you book a woman, there's makeup, there's hair, there's more time put into it. There's a lot more stuff. Did it, did that change for you at all, or you try to keep it simple? Like how much work do you have to do before an official appearance? That's kind of annoying. I'm it guessing. It depends on what kind of appearance, but um. I'm, I was I was pretty like easy, you know, before I started like wearing a little makeup and stuff. Now it's kind of like oh, I need my face done. I need my, I, I gotta come like right now. I used to just kind of like like right now, just hat glasses. I'm cool. Let's do it. But if you're I'm doing, not gonna complain. but if it's like a big show, you have to do like when you were on Nikki's tour, where you having to do it was every night a, like a big thing. Yeah, definitely. We were like every day, like because we had to hit the stage at like seven, so we were like. So what time do you have to get Prep. to the venue, for example? If you have to be on at 7. Um, we used to be kind of late. like every, Not late because we had to hit the stage, but we used to barely be like, yo, 7 o'clock sharp every day. No no shortcuts. So we, I don't know, 6.50. What was that? No. Tra- so where were you doing your makeup and stuff? In the hotel? In, on the trailer, like. Oh, oh so, okay. But, I'm after the trailer, on the tour bus. So how, okay, but how early would you have to start the process? Some days we would start an hour before. Because, I mean, it's nothing to put on clothes. I was pretty much wearing the same you know, right, outfits. Right. Um, so oh, that makes it easier. At so least the ha- hair and makeup, like, every day. Like, we used to start some days an hour before and just kind of whip it up really quick. Some days we used to get, you know, bef- like, a couple hours before. You know, it depends. I guess the bonus of a big tour like that is you can wear the same thing every night. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's kind of like a easier. costume, you know? You'd say you're, like, in costume. Or- how, how was the Pink Print tour? Anything crazy happened on that tour? Man, it's a lot of crazy stuff happened on that tour. Um, I almost died. What do you mean you almost yeah, died? Yeah, yeah, I read that on your Instagram. Tell us that story. Oh, mind, I almost died. Well, yeah, I took an <laughs> edible. <laughs> yeah, we and Laura have been there. A brownie edible. It was this your first time? I've t- I had one before. It was a cupcake, but it wasn't as strong. I don't know. We were out in Cali, so maybe that was the thing. Oh. And you ate the whole thing? No one was like, have half. No, I just had a little corner. That's and it? Just a little chunk. Oh. And it was kind of like the chunk of my life like <laughs> never again <laughs> never again <laughs> one time we me and Rosenberg and Ebro had an appearance right at a club in Jersey a at, repug club. At a, and a friend of ours had a chocolate bar and they took a piece right and I was high as hell and when Rosenberg came Rosenberg said Laura how much should I take mind you I hardly do it. Right. He's way more of a weed expert than I am, right? And I'm not a super expert. So he's like, wait, should I take <laughs> this much? I'm like, no, no, no. Don't be a pussy. Take yeah. a bigger piece. So yeah, he Rosie, took like a chunk, okay? Yeah, they're like, no, no, more. You're fine. I was like, you sure? They're like, yeah, yeah, you're good. And I was like, right. And I did it. And as we pulled up to the venue, and the venue wasn't in the best part of town. Yeah. And, it, and it wasn't a place I knew well. And we got there and I was like, 
it kicked in. I was like, guys, this is what's happening. And you're like, oh, and, and then her friends like, oh, by the way, we lied. You should have had like a tenth as much as you had. You're gonna be fucked. And it was people like I'm sure clowned you, but it really is in the moment one of the worst things. Yeah, how did it make you feel? The paranoia was like I thought everyone in there in the club was about to world star me. Like I kept thinking everyone was gonna hurt me for no, and they weren't gonna hurt me. He kept going like this. <laughs> and I and I and I wore that night. We were going to the club, and I was kind of in like a douchey zone at that point. I was wearing amber. Those the glasses Amber gave me. Ugh. So Amber Rose gave me these really fancy glasses that look ridiculous, like more extreme than your glasses. And understand, you're a fashion tista. It's different. For you. <laughs> and I'm I'm wearing like these big, crazy, expensive glasses, and I'm wearing an all black outfit, buttoned up, and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm a fucking douchebag. <laughs> Someone's gonna kill me in here, and I just I was I was I was like we have to go, and I eventually left Amber. Amber was like stranded in a crowd of people, and I was like, and I just ran out of it the club was bad. and we went had, home. We had a bad. Winter. So where were you when this all went down for you? I was. Wait, is this before you hit the stage or afterwards? Definitely after. Oh, okay. Thank God. Woo. So it where was were after you? my show? Um, I think Nikki was on stage. She had just probably got out there, and you know we all outside of the tour bus. Everybody just hanging out, chilling, drinking, and having fun. You know, tour life. I don't know. I was on the phone. I came back. I was I was drinking Hennessy, by the way. So that was already my buzz. And right. Okay. Right. Good. Norm, that's your regular though. Norm. Um. Now, people came over with a, you know, with a brownie, and they were like, yo, let's, you know, and I'm like, hmm, all right, I'll have a little piece. I haven't had this in a while. Mm -hmm. Took it. It kicked in, like, super fast. Really? Because normally you are normally you have to be careful because it could take a half hour. Sometimes people go eat more thinking it well, didn't kick in. Mine was, right, like, right. mine was like five minutes tops. Ooh. I did so much in five minutes, and then it's like, it was just a disaster from, like, the point I took it to, like, I walked in the concert to give my <laughs> friend a piece gave her a piece came out the music was so loud it was like i think that's what did it you know the music was like did you like oh, yourself in the oh. bathroom <laughs> i did not i went in the bathroom everybody was like worried i had everybody scared well so where'd you go on the bus yeah yeah that's i, I hope you hid that's what i would have done it, it was i don't know I, I i couldn't hide it was like i need to go to the hospital guys <laughs> i was like yo and i had an after party too so i kind of missed that I, I oh you skipped the after party I had to. had to. I went to the hospitals. Oh, you did you go to the hospital. You did not. I did. Overdosed on marijuana. Man. So what did they tell you? Uh, Dej, like, let me diagnose. Uh, you're just high. That's it. You just have to thug it out. It's not about thugging it out. Like, <laughs> no, there is no thug. I'm, listen. So I'm, I've had what it are you before and I've thugged it out, but this was different. It was, a, it was like I'm about to die. No, no, listen. So I'm going to make you feel a little better. And I don't want to blow up anyone's spot because hopefully they won't find her some people won't find out but someone i'm very close with and i'm related to in fact my brother is married to her um the day after my wedding <laughs> day after my wedding we're all at the mansion we we stayed at it's not a mansion but like a hotel thing mm -hmm. and um we're all sitting around someone had given one of my wife's pothead friends as a gift had given us a bag of candy right mm -hmm. so we're doing our thing blah 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 and my boy mvp calls me and he's like, yo, you need to get down here. I'm in the lobby. Your sister-in-law is going to the hospital. I'm like, w are you fucking kidding me? This is the day after the wedding. Like, it's all, We're supposed to be celebrating. Right. I sprint down. <clears throat> I get there. He's like, he just kept telling, she just kept telling the medics, someone drugged me, someone drugged me. I'm going to die, right? <laughs> and in that moment, I have a fl I'm like, drugged her. And I have this flashback of two hours earlier. She was in my hotel room. And I just remember her being like, because, you know, after the wedding, we had candy everywhere because we had a candy bar at the oh, wedding. No. So there was candy everywhere. And I just remember her being like, this lollipop's terrible. And just kept <laughs> eating it, right? <laughs> she, and I'm like, oh, shit. She ate one of our weed lollipops. And she went to the hospital just like you did. And it was not funny to her either. It was bad. And I showed up to the hospital. Uh, and I heard her in the other room cry. She's like, fuck you, brother. This isn't funny. <laughs> and I was, like, what are the, I was like, what are you doing here? What are the doctors going to do? Prescribe Doritos? Like, wh what, yeah. what, is, what are you going to do? That's what I'm saying. Did, the doctors la do. did they laugh at you or did they take you serious? No, they, they definitely took me serious. To your face? Yeah, I woke up laughing, like, in the, in the hospital, like... It was kind of like, I don't know. How long did it take, though? For what? For it to, like, really wear off. So they said I passed out for four minutes, but it felt like 40 minutes. It felt like an hour. So I was in the hospital, and I, I, I don't know. They said it wasn't that long, but it felt like I went through this whole little life thing. Like, 
What happened? You changed a woman now because what of did it? You like, see? I saw everything. <laughs> like, What'd you see? It gives you so many subliminal messages. It was just like. Do you see hoverboards? I want everybody to like try it and just kind of like. But you hated it. I, I know I'm not gonna I mean I just want everybody to experience that like it's a thing like you see things what did you see though days did you see the future yeah who was president I saw the past I thought I was gonna come back like a newborn baby to be honest <laughs> I'm like this is how it feels to die this is it and this is crazy because it hurts so bad like it hurt you it, mentally it mentally hurt it it's mentally painful it's kind of like wow this is what it feels like you're just kind of like in your mind just like like you're just like dying, like it's ridiculous. And you do, and at, at some point you actually thought you were going to die. No, nah, I knew it. I was like, this is it. No, you. Oh yeah, you said that. You didn't. I think I remember you saying you didn't think you were going to die. You knew you were going to die. No, nah, I just. I was like, this is what it's like to die. So this is what happens when people die. They slowly. Oh my god, I wish I wish. <laughs> Everybody just needs to taste the brownie, man, just to see like. <laughs> to see the other side. I can't. And yeah. it's crazy because people like do it all the time. Now. I know. That's like a once in a lifetime. Well, thing. and also I gotta say I don't want to sound like a square here, and like I'm all for legalization and everything, but like people don't realize that when everyone's like pot's fine, it can't do anything. Like it can easily, and especially if you go to the to the medicinal kind mm -hmm. where it's like a hundred times the dosage of other like yeah. that's da it is dangerous. It can be dangerous. Yeah. And at least scary mentally. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what it is. It's a mental thing. Like they tell you you're fine, nothing can happen to you, but you does in the moment it doesn't feel like that. Yeah, I'm over it. I'm Did Ray Schremer laugh at you? They didn't know. Um they didn't know. They I actually offered to Nashe some like before I even took it. I was like, Yo, you wanna you know And he was like, Nah, I'm good. Not to Nashe. She I, I offered her and her friends some. I think um, her did security, she take it? I think they gave it to her. She said they took it, you know, but they, well, nobody freaked we'll out like tomorrow. I did. Yeah, she's coming here tomorrow. Yeah. She, she's an experienced, but you're an experienced pothead. Are you you're an experienced smoker too? No, I don't smoke. I just drink. So like, oh, like, but, but so, smoking and drink and still, eating is though, two different things though. Still, it's but a I different think high. Mm. totally agree with you. But I'm just saying, I think Tanache is a pretty experienced smoker. So that does, it probably means you've had edibles before too. Yeah, like that's, it's just me. Maybe it's just me. Little days. Mm -hmm. Well, days. You also weigh seven pounds, so you That's have to be. True. You have to be mindful. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just gonna stick to the Hennessy man. How yeah. tall are you, Dave? Like five, even maybe. Oh my! Five, one. She's tiny. I know. I, I know it's inappropriate to ask. I can't ask you how much you weigh because you're a woman. But I feel like you're under 100 pounds. Nope. You're over 100 pounds. Yeah, definitely. That's it. Definitely, yeah. definitely, it's close. I don't, I'm like she's tiny. That <laughs> that brownie must have. Woo! done damage i did it once once i ate an edible and i decided to go see a movie called i spit on your grave a horror movie that has a 45 minute rape scene all right wow. it was not a pleasant experience for anyone who was in that theater that day all right i'm done with you well, it's a good movie laura it's, I'm done with it's you. scary it's a horror movie anyway so Dej, what's happening right now you're back around you're moving uh, paint prints over what's the deal well, we got the, um, I just dropped the EP like a couple months ago, actually. Um, the NC, that's the thing, EP. Mm -hmm. We got the backup single on there with Big Sean. Um, we're just, I'm pretty much working on my album now. That's pretty much what I'm doing, moving around, working uh, on the album. I want you to tell me what's true and what's not, because we, of course, you know, I have to look up everything that's going on with you. Mm -hmm. What's all that madness that was online with you? Uh, you know, I've asked you about Little Dark before. You told me you guys are just friends or whatever. Yeah. But uh, a girl claiming that she was your ex and saying that the whole relationship was fake and that she was your lover and all this. Is all that BS? Pretty much. Yeah. So none of it is true? I'm single. I've been single for quite some time now. It's pretty much. Let's say so. None of yeah. it's true. I mean, she said pretty much, Laura. She didn't <laughs> say none of it. She said pretty much. <laughs> I have to ask. Well, no, you should. It's pretty ask. much BS. Like I'm pretty much single. I am single, and that's all that really matters. Like nothing really matters. She's nothing. she's major now, so everybody's like, "Yo, everybody wants a piece of her." Well, understandably, she's yeah. she's a gorgeous woman. Nobody yeah. deserves me. I'm chilling. <laughs> It's quite a statement. Uh, by the way, I, I like to actually use that too. I know this is going to seem like a blunt question, and I hope it doesn't seem douchey, but I feel comfortable with you, so I'm just going to ask. Mm -hmm. Do do you, because um, everyone sort of speculates about your sexuality in general, mm -hmm. do you prefer men to women or women to men, or is like, if uh, what's your deal? I prefer uh, genuine people. like Genuine people? Yeah, that's it. I'm, I, like I, that. I just love people. Mm -hmm. too. You know? Not me. I like these fake ass bitches out here. No, but I hear you. I hear you. So whoever you find that's genuine in your life, yeah, that like, makes I sense. Yeah, I'm just yeah. And is built for this life because your life is different now. Definitely. I mean, you're pretty mage. I, you you became. I gotta tell you, your ascension was one of the fastest things ever. I saw. 
Dej Loaf comes out at BB King's with the with the locks, right? Oh, yeah. I saw that clip. You remember that? Definitely. I'm, yeah, I'm sure that was a big moment. I guess you do remember that. And then I was like, Dej Loaf? Who, I don't, what is this? And like the next week, it was fucking on and popping. What was that like few week period like? It seemed like it ha- like must have been a whirlwind. Um, it, everything just been had been going fast, like just like everything was happening so fast. Like I'm meeting these legends. It's like what is going on? Like sometimes I still be like, yo, it's happened so fast. I don't know. Cause I know you worked for a while, but yeah, the actual blow up did happen quick, and people really took to you. Like the it legends just, took to you. It was just natural. Like it just felt like wow, wasn't that big of a? I don't know. It, was, it wasn't that big of a deal. It definitely was a big deal. But it was just like wow, that's pretty much all I can say about it. Do you feel any sort of higher level of pressure now that like that you know you have a major label and a major name and you've been on a major tour? Does it change the creative process for you? And you have all these major people that co-sign you and love you. Yeah. You said does it change the pressure? Yeah, and like the the way that you go approach the music. Def it it I will say yes, but I try to stay like stick to what I know. You know what I'm saying? Like not put too much pressure on myself. Just create naturally like I was doing before like but it's definitely different when you enter the industry and it's like, oh, this is what it's like. This, okay, this is what I have to do. So I'm learning a lot, but I'm still sticking to my guns and like doing what I do. Not being, not feeling pressure. Like my real Dej Love supporters and fans, like they're going to follow what I do. Like regardless, they're going to ride for me. So this is who I'm working for, like them. Do you always feel, do you always feel that you're rapper first? Because you have a beautiful, unique singing voice as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know, like, I have this MC little thing. first? <laughs> yeah, I, that's why I, I want to do, like, on my album, like, get back to the rap, and I think a lot of people, like, don't understand that I rap, so it's kind of like, I want to get back to that, but I, I still do my thing, my melodies, and my, my voice, whole little thing, like, that's... Well, I mean, the chorus you did for the Kid Ink record was... Yeah. That was Madge, dude. Yeah, I get a lot of compliments about that, too. I mean, it's it's a very... Like, it's an instantaneous, you hear it, it's a unique sounding voice, and it's just super catchy. So I think it, instantly people start thinking, oh, this is a lane for her to pursue. Yeah. But they forget that you what you came out with and what you really are about is, like, pretty hardcore bars. So, I mean, I do, I do it all, like I say. I don't really, I don't know. I appreciate both equally, like, I do it all. So. Um, my, my one concern that I have for you sometimes is that I worry people will put you in a box because you're very attractive and you're very well put together and fashionable and like your Instagram's very well manicured, like you look very model-esque almost. Mm-hmm. And I worry that people will push you more in that way as opposed to music. music. And mm-hmm. that and that does that ever concern you that you're like, shit, I don't want to become a fucking you know, fashion icon, I want to be a rapper, an MC first or whatever. I don't know. I, I didn't look at it like that. I mean, I get like fly, but I don't like, I didn't look at it like, oh, I'm this model. This, I didn't, I didn't see it like that, but. Have you been approached by uh, agencies though? Not, no, not that I know of. They should, like, they should be. Well, guess what? Yeah. They're, they're wrong. Yeah. I mean, I guess five zero is not the most common model height in the world. But you're such a you're so unique and you put your shit together. So trust me, listen. Yeah, this, and I, but my, coming from my, someone who knows, as you can tell when you look at me, please. I am a pillar of fashion, and I have to pick: am I going to be a radio talent or am I going to be a fashion talent? It's not easy for me. <laughs> she's taking me she serious. Because she, she knows she doesn't think it's funny because she sees my style as that real, Laura. She didn't even look I get it. You see the checkered vibes today? Bonobos. It's nothing to a boss. <laughs> Why are you laughing so I'm hard? Sorry, you don't sorry. have to laugh that hard, though. Is there anyone that you'd be uh, particularly excited to work with in this moment? Fetty's had a hell of a year. He's another guy who does very interesting things vocally. Different mm-hmm. than you, but very well. Yeah, um, I'm into working with, like, I don't know, people who want to work with me. I don't want to name people, and then it's like, you know, they might not even want to work with me, but... And then you don't want to put the pressure out there, like, oh, but I asked you. Hmm. Yeah, like, um... I, I think know. you're in a position Anita right now that Baker, you, that you like, could pretty. I don't know. Oh, I'm I need a baker. Like that. Yeah, stuff like that. That'll be mage. That's mage. Why I need a baker? I don't know. I love her music. I love what she has done. Like, she's like the best, the goat, and she's from Detroit. On top of everything, but she's just like I need a baker. 
Do you guys listen to her? Yeah. What do you? I'm I d- honestly, curious. I don't have enough of Anita Baker history to be honest. Da, 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 All right, that's enough. That's enough. Da, 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 da. Is that besides Anita Baker? Like, what do you listen to on your downtime? Like, who do you love? Who do you vibe out to? That's like I, I have like an old soul. I want to say like I listen to a lot of old stuff. Oh, like her, like Tony Braxton. Yeah. Um. Sade. Sade. I know you love Sade, Laura Styles. I'm kind of just making sure. I'm not a huge Sade. He's not fan. a huge Sade fan, so I always I give him shit for few, it. I got a few albums in on my um in my library, but I don't know. I listen to like older stuff, some new stuff. I'm trying to think of new artists I listen to. Are there any rapper? Are there any pure MCs that really impress you, just from a rap standpoint? Not really. I mean, well, I can't think of them right now, so I'm not gonna. Let me see. You should listen to. Have you listened to Logic at all? No, I never heard it. Never heard it. Logic. B- I heard b- 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 bars. bars. Yeah, he can. He can really, really. I don't know why he popped in my mind. He's about to. His record's about to come out. But I think that's why. Yeah, he's just he's doing the rounds right now. But Logic's very, really, really dope. What about other female rappers? Do you like Rhapsody? I never listened to who Rhapsody. Was. Rhapsody's pretty dope. Rhapsody's gone on. It's cute because you guys would be like, it'll. I could just see them together like working. I just had a vision right now. No, no. Well, she has. Right? She Rhapsody is developing a rabid fan base too. She's been around for years putting in work, and then she got the feature on Kendrick's album, and ever since then, like. Me and Sife were doing a live podcast recently, and Rhapsody came up, and Sife was like, someone was like, if, if if Rhapsody ever got the chance, Nicki Minaj wouldn't stand a chance. And Sife was like, where do you think Rhapsody would beat Nicki Minaj? And they were like, yeah, don't you? And Sife was like, no, nope, I think Nicki would body Rhapsody. The room almost exploded. <laughs> it was like murmur. It was real life murmurs. You I, ever I heard love like, them rah, both, rah, rah. but I love them different. You know, they're different to me. You know, I don't think yeah. you, I don't feel the need to pit women against each other. Right. I, feel, I feel it's actually more the opposite. That, that's the thing I think is a big challenge for uh, women as artists is that generally speaking, and that's what was cool about Nikki um, bringing you on the tour. I thought, but like, there's generally the separation between women in the industry as opposed to propping each other up, which is I know it sounds corny and cliche, but it really is important. Super important to people yeah. getting that lo- opportunity. Did any work get done on this tour? Did anyone ever get in the studio while you guys were out moving? Um, me and Nikki, we have something. We wasn't in the studio together, but we we got some stuff um, supposed to be working on. So. Mm, that's that's dope. Yeah. yeah. Was it? Was it? Um, was the Meek Drake situation awkward at any point for everyone on the tour? <laughs> were there ever moments where we were like? It was. I mean, because we were like on the tour while everything was happening, so it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. But and then yeah. you're seeing them, and you're like, oh, this is the biggest thing happening in the world right now. Yeah. Everybody was just like, it's like it wasn't happening, but it was because we're like really right here, like on tour every day, like, and it's like. All this stuff on Instagram and it's like, oh, this is happening while we're. <laughs> it's, it's, it seemed like it wasn't happening because everybody, like on Me's Camp, everybody was just chilling, like, was just having fun. So, right. It's not like they were walk- pacing back and forth, like planning and <laughs> writing and strategizing. Like people were like, like really working, like, oh, that is not that's not happening right now. See, I'd like to think that I'd like to think that while it was happening, like you'd walk into a room in an arena, and Meek's whole team would be around, they'd be like cal- graphing calculators. Oh, really? With would charts, be, charts, and doors <laughs> locked, and cigarettes being smoked, and food being ordered, and <laughs> interns. Um, today is October twenty first, which is uh, as everyone said a million times now, Back to the Future Day. Um, today is the day Marty McFly was supposed to go to the future. A, are you a Back to the Future fan? No, I'm not. Have mm-hmm. you ever seen any of the movies? No, I haven't. Are you a communist? Are you, are you against? Are you a part? Are you American? Are you an alien? How have you not seen Back to the Future? What's I, happening? I, I, what are you guys doing? Or what, what's your camp doing? I don't know. I never saw that. What is it? Tell me about it. What do you mean? Oh, oh, what do you mean, no. Dage Loaf? I don't know. I'm from Detroit. Is that, no, 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 no. That's no. not an excuse. No, no it's not. <laughs> Detroit is very much America. A hundred percent. I'm gonna put that on my to do list. It sounds. Like, are you being serious though? Or no, because you're. you're no, I'm serious. <laughs> I never like. I've heard, like I say, Marty McFly. I've heard of the, 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 the hoverboard. I've seen the car. Yes, okay. I've seen, oh, the whole so she kind of knows. But I just never saw it. Well, I'm not we, gonna lie, like I have. No, don't perp- You can't perpetrate. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know, that I told. Too. I admitted this week I've never seen Wild Style. And guess what, Laura? Oh. I, have, I have never seen Wild Style. I'm not a real old school hip hop head. Apparently, it's like hip hop Jesus. Where are you? What's happening? Know, please, hip hop <laughs> Jesus. Anyways, Dej, always good seeing you. Definitely. Um, is there any other of her business that we were supposed to get into, Laura? You know, I don't no, remember those things. Nah, that's it. Sure? No, that's it. Any other gossip you want to tell us now, so like in case... Do you want to start a rumor right now? You want to start a rumor right now? Why not? Dej and Drake have been dating for the last few months. Congratulations. 
It's really nice what's <laughs> happening. And um, good luck with all that. 